Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme with REST API. Uh, in this video, we're going to start building the form for our checkout page. So let's do that. So currently, so currently we are in this checkout form component and inside of this, we'll first pull the billing and shipping countries. So we'll say const billing countries shipping countries and we'll pull that from countries data and if that's not available we'll just set that equal to an empty object okay once we have that uh, we're going to basically create an initial state where we're going to hold the data for the user so we'll say const initial state equals billing so this will this will contain the billing information for the user and then we'll have shipping this will contain the shipping user uh, shipping information for the user then we'll have create account where the user wants to create a new account while placing the order or not we'll set that to false initially uh, we'll have some order notes in case if there are some order notes we'll also have the billing different than shipping in case uh, if the user chooses that the billing address is different than the shipping address and then payment method let's say cash on delivery cod and then we're going to put some default customer information there um, and the reason for that is because sometimes we are testing and we really don't want to go ahead and keep filling that information right so that is why we'll go ahead and put some a default customer information. So let's do that. Say const default customer info equals. So we'll have first name. I'll just do a copy paste. Will take a lot of time for me to type this. So I'll paste it here. So I'll paste this guy twice. And the reason for that is because sometimes when we want to just test our checkout functionality, we don't want to be keep typing this information over and over again. So at that point, we can use this. Otherwise, we'll just keep it as empty. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out for now. Let's keep everything empty for now. And let's uncomment this. Okay, so we have first name, last name, address, city, country, state, postcode, email, phone number, company, name, and then if there are any errors related to them. And I'm going to pass that here. So we'll say dot dot dot. So this will fill the billing information with the default data and shipping information also with the default customer information. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we will create some of the, so we'll get the cart information on this page. We know that we already have that in the context API. So we'll say cart set cart equals use context and then this is going to need the app context again we have already discussed all of this in the previous episode so if you haven't watched them then you can watch them first okay then we're going to need to have uh, an input object where we're going to keep all of the data from the user input so we'll say const input set input equals use state and then we're going to pass this initial state inside of this okay and notice that um, this is already being pulled on top so i don't have to do that over again and let me pull this guy down okay so php storm is, editor is already pulling all of that data importing all of the data on the top i don't have to do that myself okay so we got the input set input uh, in case if there's any errors, this will contain request error. Set request error equals use state null. So if we make any request errors uh, to any API and if there are any errors, we'll, we'll store that information here. Then we will manage the shipping states and set the shipping states equals use state. So this is where we're going to 
uh, store the state for the shipping states in case if the user has selected a particular country we should be able to uh, get the data for the relevant states in this so that's why we're going to manage that here and then same thing goes for billing so billing states initially they're going to be empty okay and then uh, when we call the api to get the shipping state we need to store that information that state also like while we are processing that information uh, we should be loading so to load we're going to say const we're going to store the state of loading in is fetching shipping state set is fetching shipping states equals use state and initially we'll set that to false similarly we'll do the uh, same for billing so we'll replace that with billing okay so when the user has selected country we're going to uh, use this to know that it's fetching that information will show some kind of a loader at that point okay uh, next thing we do is we also hold the state of whether or not the order is processing like let's say if you make a call to the stripe api while the order is processing a session is created etc at that point of time you also need to show some kind of loading so we'll store that information here is order processing so set is order pro processing equals use state again this will be false initially okay uh, then the last one last but not the least uh, created order data set created so when we're going to create the order data we'll hold that information here created order data equals use state and initially it'll be an empty object okay awesome so that's that uh, next thing we do is we go ahead and start creating our uh, form so of course we don't want to create form in case if there's no information in the cart so uh, we can say if cart is available then we go ahead and show the form okay else we don't show anything it's going to be null i mean you can put like a a link to the home page also here but now i'm just putting null okay. all right so inside of this form i'm going to say on submit equals handle form submit so this is going to need to have a function that is handle form submit which we will deal with later okay so that will handle the form submit we'll have some class names uh, that you can add like woo next checkout form you can give it whatever class you want okay then we say div inside of this we have the class name grid grid calls one md grid calls two and gap 20 so we're just using the tailwind classes so that we don't actually have to write our styles we can reuse the ones that are available then again inside of this we have another div um, where we have the shipping details so shipping details so say div class name you can give it like shipping details and then inside of this we can have an h2 h2 will have we can have class name text excel okay and we can say shipping details and you can say font medium font weight margin bottom four okay then uh, we need to have the address for the user 
So let's just see how that's looking for now. <clears throat> so we can see that we have the shipping details right now. Uh, do an inspect element and uh, we have the form as well, which is great. It's what we built. Next thing we do is basically have the address. Uh, so we may need to use the same uh, kind of markup at multiple places rather than repeating ourselves. It's better to create a component. So I'm going to create a component called address because we're going to need that. We're going to need that in the shipping and billing as well. So I'm going to create a component for that. So let's go to checkout and we create user address, the file called user address. And here we'll say const address equals and it's going to need some of the variables such as input. Uh, we're going to need countries. Uh, we'll need states. Uh, we're going to need the handle on change function. Uh, we're going to create that quickly. Handle on change. Leave it like that for now. So handle on on change function. Then we're going to have is fetching states. We're going to need is shipping. Uh, so we need to know that this component should be used for the billing or the shipping address. That's why we need some kind of a uh, variable here that tells us that. And then we'll just say const from input. Remember we had uh, put the error in the input. So let me show you that. See that errors, right? So we're going to pull the errors from the input. So I'm going to say errors equals input and that okay and then return instead of this we'll say div class name flex flex wrap overflow hidden and then sm M X three. Okay, just giving margin left. And instead of this, we're gonna need uh, different input fields like first name, last name, all of those kind of things. Again, uh, we're gonna be needing that input field multiple times for multiple fields like first name, last name, um, you know, address input field. So rather than using, you know, repeating ourselves for the things that we're gonna need, let's create a component for that. So I'm gonna create a component called input field. And we can probably put that in form elements, form elements, we create a directory. And inside of that, we create input field dot JS. And here is where we put the input field. Okay. So let me show that to you. So say const input field equals, uh, this is going to need again, a few things going to need handle on change. It's going to need input value uh, name what type of input it is then label any errors we're going to need the placeholder we'll need to know if this is required or not we're going to need container class class names okay then if it's shipping or billing okay all of that information so now inside of this, we say input ID equals, we can say name, whatever that name of input is. And then is shipping, <coughs> question mark, shipping, and then colon. So we use the ternary operator. So basically we want to create a different input ID for depending on whether or not uh, this is a billing or a shipping. So we kind of doing that um, by combining the name and the fact that whether it's shipping or not. Okay. So then inside of this, uh, we'll say return and then div inside of class, we'll put container class name in case if there are any, uh, and then we'll say label label. And then HTML four will be like input ID input ID. And then inside of the label, we'll say if the label is available, great. If not, just empty. And then we also need to give this some classes for styling. 
let's say leading seven text fm text gray 700 and then that's it all right uh, so i'm going to stop here because otherwise the video will be too long uh, so I'm going to stop here and in the next video, we'll continue further building our checkout form. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. If you aren't already, uh, do consider giving super thanks uh, to me by hitting the super thanks button. And uh, do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech and follow me on GitHub. My GitHub hand handle is Imran Isayad. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.